back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and this is 10 cards you should be putting in your Commander decks. Episode 10. Can't believe I've made 10 of these already. Uh, you know, I kind of started making these videos on a lark just because I saw a few cards that I thought people might want to try in their decks, and it's become my, my most popular series of videos. Apparently, everyone likes the suggestions. So, starting out this time, number one, Reality Ripple. Two mana, target artifact, creature, or land phases out. So, I think by now, because of Teferi's protection, everyone has realized how powerful phasing can be. It's kind of interesting how they were trying to phase out phasing, no pun intended, uh, because they, they thought of it as a really <laughs> goofy uh, mechanic that didn't really work in the rules of the game. And then, you know... It sort of regained popularity, I think, mostly through Commander. And, and now they actually have reprinted cards with phasing in them, which is interesting. Um, it can be a really powerful effect because of the fact that when something is phased out, it is, you know, it's basically untouchable, right? It, you can't interact with anything that's phased out. So Reality Ripple is basically a one-shot to Fairy's Protection. Rather than just three mana phase out all your stuff, you can pay two and phase out that one thing that you really, really want to save from getting destroyed. I, I had considered at one point making an Ishe deck, and I thought this would be great in an Ishe deck because you're putting all those counters on your Ishe and you don't want it to get bounced or destroyed or anything. And phasing out keeps counters, so you can phase out your Ishe and it'll come back in and the, fa and the counters will still be there. And I know people will say, okay, well, why not just use a counter spell? You're in blue, right? Why not just cast you know, Arcane Denial or something. Sure, but th this can be better. This can be better for uh, two reasons. Now, reason number one, as I've already stated on this channel, a lot of people hate blue because of all the counter spells. So if, if you're countering everything your opponents do, it really annoys them and makes you a target. This is not doing that. This is, I think this is going to annoy people a little less. The other reason, though, is if you think about it, your opponent casts a Wrath of God, right? He's going to blow up the whole board, and your Ishe, again, let's pretend we're playing that deck, right? Your Ishe is there, if you counter that Wrath of God, it saves everyone's creatures. If you reality ripple and phase out your Ishe, everyone else's creatures get destroyed and then your Ishe phases back in and you're the only one with a creature. So I think that's actually, in, in a lot of cases, it can be better. Coming in at number two, Reap. And when I made my um, color specific video, there was a couple of people who were like, hey, what about Reap? Yeah, Reap can be good. Um, you know, for me, compost is way better. Compost is two mana. It's just going to sit on the table and draw you a bunch of cards. Reap can be good. I, I do have this in my Dragon Lord Dramoka deck, which I will be posting pretty soon. I, I know Josh uh, from the Command Zone really is hy hypes this card a lot. It can be good, yeah. It, it, I mean, you're returning cards from your graveyard to your hand. That can be really good. This is black permanence target opponent controls, so it's not even all your opponents. It's just one. So, I mean, it is good. It is a, a card that, you know, again, if I was going to play a fringe sort of color-specific card, I would play compost over this, personally. But it, it definitely is worth, worth a consideration, especially if you're, again, if you're in a play group where there's lots of people playing black, it definitely can be really good. Coming in at number three, Reconnaissance. Another card that I think I just talked about recently in one of my videos. I think General Jarkeld was the, I was talking about him. Very interesting, unique commander. And whenever you're talking about interesting, unique commanders, you want to also be talking about unique, interesting cards that can go with them. Reconnaissance is, is just fantastic, right? One mana enchantment, and it has one of these rare zero mana abilities that they printed, I think, only in Tempest Block, they had a lot of these zero mana abilities that basically had nothing. You don't pay anything for the activation. Um, but because it is an activated ability, you still have to have that zero there. And you just remove a attacking creature you control from combat and untap it. It's just saving your creature. If it gets into a sticky situation, can be really great. Again, in a deck like General Jarkeld, where you are doing a lot of combat manipulation stuff. But in particularly, this card gets used a lot if your commander has an attack trigger. Narset players use this card a lot, right? So in order to get that Narset trigger, you have to attack. But if your opponents all have blockers, then you're going to attack into your opponent and your Narset dies, and then you can't go off like a Narset deck usually does. So Reconnaissance allows you to keep 
you attack with it, you get the trigger, and then you pull it out of combat, and it doesn't have to. You don't have to worry about your Narset dying. So any commander in white that you want to be attacking that has an attack trigger that you you know don't have to worry about it dying. Zer maybe is another one that you could use it on, right? It's an attack trigger that if you're concerned about someone blocking it, you can just untap it and have it survive. Next up, Rishidan Poncha. Uh, this is a, an interesting one. Again, it's another card that it just has such a unique ability that there's there's always going to be ways that you can use cards like this, right? So it's a two mana artifact. You pay two mana and tap it, shuffle target, non-token permanent, you control into its owner's library. So I had this card in my Yasova deck, which I just recently talked about. And, you know, you can steal your opponent's creature and then when you're done attacking with it you pay two and shuffle it into their library which in a lot of ways can be better right a lot of people will use like evolutionary leap and sacrifice the creature but then it goes to their graveyard maybe you don't want it in their graveyard maybe you want to shuffle it into their library if they're playing a recursion deck you know there, there's just a lot of ways to use a card like this you can also use it on yourself this is a way that you can put a creature into your library if you're playing a polymorph style deck right if anyone has a deck out there like that or Divergent Transformation, right? Those kind of cards, what people do is you play it in like a Kai card deck and then you kill your tokens and go get big stuff out of your deck. So if you want to maybe reuse that ability, you can shuffle that card back into your library and get it again. Just a very interesting, unique card with a lot of different ways to use it. Coming in at number five, Ritual of the Machine. Another old, interesting card. Okay, so four mana sorcery as an additional cost to cast this spell, you sacrifice a creature. Gain control of target non-artifact, non-black creature. So this is just a black card that gains control of creatures. And it's not completely unique. There are a few other black cards that gain control of creatures. Not a lot, though. And also, you know, it has that sacrifice effect, which in black you really don't care about, right? I mean, probably in, in a deck that's going to use this, you want to be sacrificing creatures. So it's just an option. If you're in an aristocrat's deck, if you're in a deck where you're going to be sacrificing lots of creatures anyway, why not gain control of one of your opponent's creatures while you're at it, right? Coming in at number six, Rupture. And this is a really interesting one. Again, we're sacrificing a creature as a cost to cast this. Um, it's a three mana sorcery, all right? You're going to sacrifice a creature. Rupture deals damage equal to that creature's power to each creature without flying and each player. So this is basically sort of a, a an alternative Chandra's Ignition. I mean, it's cheaper um, and it's going to do the same effect. You have to sacrifice the creature, which isn't great. You know, maybe there are situations where you want to do that. This can just be a board wipe. You can just sacrifice a big creature and deal a bunch of damage to all your opponent's stuff. Again, it's not... Sandra's Ignition is, is, is better than this. This is just an alternative, also a cheaper alternative, right? So there's that. Next up, Scalding Salamander. This is an interesting one. You know, again, another card that I cracked in packs back in the day. Didn't think anything of it. However, it has, again, it's kind of a unique ability, right? So uh, it's three mana, two, one. It's a salamander. So when Scalding Salamander attacks, you may have it deal one damage to each creature without flying defender playing your trolls. Okay, so if your opponent just cast an Avenger of Zendikar and didn't put any counters on them you could kill all those plant tokens that's pretty good i would imagine when most people read this the first thing they think is what i thought which is let's give this thing death touch right if you can give this thing death touch it's going to deal one damage to each creature the defending player controls and they all die that's it just put a basilisk collar on this scalding salamander and it just wipes your opponent's board every turn right? Now, of course, you don't want to build a deck around a card like this. However, there are decks that I think it will already fit in. The one that I think it fits perfectly in is Zagreus, Thief of Heartbeats, right? He gives your creatures death touch, right? Other creatures you control have death touch. So now, once you play your Zagreus, every time you attack with your Scalding Salamander, he's just going to kill all your opponent's creatures, right? The defending player, anyway. There are also lots of other decks where you want to be giving death touch to your creature right i have a lazolda deck i used to have a lazolda the blood witch deck and i wanted my lazolda to have death touch so i had lots of effects in there that gave death touch to my creatures so that again another card that would fit great in a deck like that coming in at number eight serene master another card that was printed at uh, in the very first commander set i think or the second commander set and again this is a card that you look at and you sort of go yeah okay whatever but if you really think about it right so it two mana it's an o2 human monk 
When Serene Master blocks, exchange its power and the power of target creature, it's blocking until end of turn. That's really, really powerful, okay? This essentially, I mean, is there a better blocker than this? This is one of the best blocking creatures around. If you're playing a deck like that, right? Any deck, maybe an Aloro deck, decks where people like to put fog banks, right? Fog banks are a really good blocker because it doesn't get dealt damage. This though, you're actually going to kill the opponent's creature, right? So let's run through this, right? Your opponent attacks with a 5-5 creature, right? They're attacking into you. You block with your Serene Master and then you exchange its power and the power of the creature it's blocking. So now the creature that is attacking, instead of a 5-5, it's now an 0-5 because it gets Serene Master's power, which is zero. They're swapping. So now Serene Master is a 5-2, and the attacking creature is an 0-5. So Serene Master is always going to survive this encounter. Most creatures, power and toughness is the same. So typically, what's going to happen is you're going to block, and the opponent's creature is going to die. Pretty quickly, your opponent's going to realize, I just can't attack this guy, right? So in any deck, maybe Pillow Fort style deck, I ended up throwing this in my Sigrid deck. I think it's a great fit in there because I want to prevent people from attacking me. You know, pretty quickly your opponents realize, hey, I just can't attack this guy with any creature or else my creature just dies and the Serene Master is perfectly fine. Next up, Shimmer. <laughs> Another interesting old card. It's an enchantment for mana. As Shimmer enters the battlefield, choose a land type. Okay, so a land type is any type that is after the hyphen, right? Just So just like a creature type, or like your creature type is elf, human, whatever. A land type is anything that, you know, it's not non-basic land. Non-basic land is not a type. So you can't pick that. However, you can pick other stuff. For example, if someone has an Urza's Tower out, you know, Urza's Tower has the type Urza's Tower. So you can pick with your shimmer you can pick urza's tower as the type and then that's what will be affected by the shimmer right so of course once we pick the type then what does it do well each land of the chosen type has phasing again another phasing card basically this is going to hose one person right so maybe in a mono blue deck i mean obviously you're not going to pick lands that you control because this affects all lands of the chosen type and again, it's another card. I'm starting to mention these cards that I typically wouldn't play. Like back in the day, I would never play cards like this. But again, the more people are playing more and more colors, the more these kinds of cards become more significant, right? In particular, in a mono blue deck, right? You play this on a mono blue deck and obviously you're not going to name Island. You're going to name anything else, right? So you look around the table. You got three opponents playing forests. You name forest and all of their forests are going to phase out. Maybe someone plays an Urborg uh, and you name a swamp, but I mean, obviously all your lands are going to be swamps too. So then everyone's lands are going to gain phasing, which would be kind of funny and interesting. Uh, it's just a funny, interesting card, very unique ability, can be really good though. Can be, you know, if you're sitting at a table and there's some guy who's playing mono green and he's going crazy, you name forest and you can really slow him down. And lastly today, Shivan Harvest. Since I'm going after lands, I thought I'd throw this in there. Man, I've never seen this card before and it seems pretty darn good in commander right so two mana enchantment pay two mana sacrifice a creature destroy target non-basic land first of all you think about the amount of lands and i've talked about this in a lot of my videos right the amount of non-basic lands that are, are going to want to be a target the, the gaia's cradles and the cabal coffers and etc there's so many of them and how many decks does this fit in right i have a casket and togo deck that i want to be sacrificing stuff all the time that i have no problem Two mana, sacrifice a creature? Okay, great. No problem. I have no problem being able to do that. You can do it at instant speed as well. Just to destroy any non-basic land? That's fantastic. Uh, any goblin deck, like a Krenko deck, any deck like that where you're making lots of tokens that you can just sacrifice to destroy people's lands? Man, I think this is fantastic. In again, like a Krenko deck, any goblin deck, I think this would be great in. Any aristocrats or sacrifice style deck that has red, this is great in. You know, it's one of my mantras for commander, right? If you're making a commander deck, there's two things you always have to include, you know, in my mind, in any commander deck, graveyard hate, some form of graveyard hate, and you have to be able to destroy lands, non-basic lands, right? I never put strip mine in my decks 
because I think destroying basic lands is kind of mean and, and sort of a CEDH strategy. You got to be able to destroy non-basic lands. I, I put Wasteland or Ghost Quarter in, in all of my commander decks. I'm going to put this probably in a couple of my decks now, right? You, you just have to be able to destroy non-basic lands in commander because you're always going to have the guy who gets out the Cabal Coffers and the Urborg and just goes nuts and cast a giant torment of hellfire or you're going to have the guy who gets out the Gaia's Cradle and just completely takes over the game with all the mana. So you just have to be able to answer that and uh you know this is this is definitely an option, an option I've never seen before and I'm sure a lot of pe other people haven't. I hope it helps. I hope this list helps a lot of people uh with tuning their decks and improving them. That's what these lists are all about. I'm making suggestions for people that they might want to include in the decks that they already have. That is it for today. That is episode 10. I've done 100 cards now, so feel free to go check out the older videos. But that is it for today and thanks for tuning in.